Look for the beating heart of Birmingham Yardley on a Friday evening, you'll end up here. A Muslim barbers named after Italian mobsters, where they come in droves on payday. How often do you come here, Fame? Every week. And what's your ritual? Friday prayer and straight to the barbers for my weekly haircut. And then sometimes I go to dinner to, to Mohammed's house after. The business is as old as the last parliament, set up two short years ago by brothers who tell me they work a seven day week. They'll queue for up to an hour. They come for razor cuts, skin fades and eyebrow threading, which looks vastly more painful. They're local boys who work mostly in Birmingham's car industry. I want to know if next month's election is on their mind. Are you normally about? Normally about here, normally Labour. But obviously things are changing here, so whatever suits my needs, that's what I've got to go with now. So. What do you mean things are changing? Well, the way life is, you know, like uh, money-wise, you know, you're working and you got to look at your family and see what's best for them. So whatever the big deals, best deals coming for your family. So it, might it be conservative this time around? It could well be, yeah. It could well be. How do you make your choice? I tend to go with the majority. So my peers, my close relations, friends, family, etc. I do tend to, tend to go along with that at times. But um, Do you get the sense that a lot of people are voting this time or are they not very interested? Or I don't think a lot of the youth that is interested yet. Yeah. Perhaps he's right. This time it feels like more of the election enthusiasm on the doorstep comes from its canine community. But this is a battleground seat, in more ways than one. A surprise gain for Labour in 2015 from the imploding Lib Dems, the two candidates face each other again in a fight both visceral and personal. This bit is one of the more affluent bits of my constituency. Um, We've come to find say, Jess sort of Phillips, a self-styled everywoman, people, the MP before dissolution. Workers. Charity workers, that sort of thing. Did you vote Labour in the last general election? Don't uh, worry, I won't no, be offended didn't if you didn't vote for no, me. But I, I mean, I'll have a word with Jane, but no. Will you be getting out to vote on June the 8th? Yeah, yes, yes. And how will, will you be, be voting? voting? Which party will you vote for? I've generally always voted for the Labour Party. <laughs> She's no fan of her leader, Jeremy Corbyn, but I'm wondering if Labour's leaked manifesto has given her ammunition on the campaign now. I think it does make it easier when you have some clear lines in the sand between you and the other side. Um, so, yeah, it, I think it will make it easier, actually, having the manifesto. There is no doubt about it that people feel that whilst they might have voted Labour in the past, they're not sure about Corbyn. That comes, it does come up. And why are they not sure? Because, as you said, there's a, a shopping list now of policies that yeah. are pretty attractive to a lot of people. Yeah. Actually, I, I think that they probably will be a bit surer after the manifesto if it, gets, if it reaches them. I think that they will. Because actually what is in the manifesto, aside from some of the stuff around nationalising things, it really is the kind of thing that gets raised with us on the doorstep. How do you make sense, Jess, then, and we're trying to make sense of this, that when Jeremy Corbyn goes out into the country, he has these amazing crowds, there's noise, there's excitement and there's enthusiasm, mm -hmm. and the polls don't seem to tally. I think it's a potentially dangerous thing for him, because if you have a feedback loop that is always kind to you, then you might not be getting the real sense of the picture. Theresa May is guilty of this as well at the moment. I think she's closing herself off and only allowing, you know, the, the faithful to speak to her. This isn't Jeremy Corbyn's problem alone. Her Lib Dem opponent in this seat, the MP before her, is John Hemming. The Lib Dems are really hoping for a resurgence this time round. Are you feeling that resurgence? I, 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 don't, I wouldn't say it's going massively well, but in Yardley it's going well. So I, I don't know about other places because... You, it's difficult to tell and when when I'm talking to people on the doorstep it's very much the, the local story. The Conservative Party candidate is duly elected. And what was and once a two-horse race has just been re-energised by a critical Tory win. Last week I was elected across all of the West Midlands as uh, mayor uh, standing as a Conservative candidate and I think something very significant happened last week because people said let's think about whether our traditional loyalty to the Labour Party really has delivered for us. A month from today, the political map will be redrawn. The bubble may talk of landslides and resurrection, crushing defeat or party splits, but much of the country will simply carry on and do what they do on any other Friday night.
That was Emily. Here's a list of the candidates who are running for the election in the Birmingham Yardley constituency.